is Brenda Banwell. I'm a pediatric neurologist at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, Canada. I run a pediatric multiple sclerosis program and a national pediatric demyelinating disease research program. I, mean, I think the key thing is just that the, the focus in pediatric multiple sclerosis in the first five to seven years was did it exist in children? Was it the same disease? Uh, in other words, do, what, what happened to children is it similar to what happens in adults? And the studies have really uh, convincingly said yes. Um, MS in children, though, is relapsing remitting. Uh, we, it is exceptionally rare to see primary progressive in multiple sclerosis in a child. And that means when parents seek information about multiple sclerosis and, their, uh, and its impact on their children, it's really wise for them to focus on literature that relates to pediatric onset disease. Otherwise, they're reading a great deal about secondary and potentially even primary progressive MS, which may have very little to do with what their children are likely to experience, at least in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and I think that's very important, um, certainly important for the children. Um, uh, the last, last five years have now focused on understanding why children uh, with multiple sclerosis differ from their peers in terms of environmental risk factors and the biology of MS, and I think the next 10 years are going to focus on how best to care for kids with MS. Great. So how big an issue is childhood MS? So the onset of multiple sclerosis during childhood affects approximately 3 to 10 percent of all MS patients. Um, about 2 percent of all MS patients have their disease onset prior to the age of 10 years. Uh, the disease is increasingly recognized, um, but we've been uh, aware of pediatric MS uh, really uh, more in the last 10 years, so it's difficult to say for sure whether pediatric MS is increasing in incidence or just being uh, increasingly frequent uh, in terms of diagnosis uh, and management. Okay, and um, what are the treatment options currently for children with MS? So currently, uh, the uh, first-line uh, immune modulatory therapies for MS are being used in children. So interferon beta 1A, interferon beta 1B, and glutamate acetate are the mainstays of disease uh, modification. Uh, at least in countries where access to those medications uh, is possible. Uh, in uh, countries where financial or other restrictions limit access to medication for children, some children are not being treated uh, arbitrarily until they turn 18, uh, or are being treated with medications such as azathioprine, which are less expensive. And are there any new um, therapeutics coming along? Right, well, uh, the, there are multiple new agents in the pipeline for MS care, uh, all of which have been studied exclusively to date in adults. Uh, Tysabri and Fingolimid have both been released on the market in various countries as for uh, second-line therapies for adult MS. Uh, uh, Tysabri has been used in uh, adolescent MS patients in Germany and Italy. Uh, and perhaps uh, very small numbers elsewhere, but is not currently approved uh, for uh, application in pediatrics. Fingolimid, um, or FTY 720, uh, was released in North America only a few months ago. It is strictly uh, 18 years of age and older in terms of its uh, use right now. Uh, in addition, uh, there are multiple medications that are currently approaching uh, approval uh, for uh, marketing and the Pediatric Investigation Plan Program, which is uh, mandated now by the European Medicine Agency, Fed, uh, Health Canada, and the uh, uh, Federal Drug Agency in the United States, will require that these new therapies have a plan for investigation in children. What that really means is that there will be an increase in trials of medications for pediatric MS patients, uh, and that access to some of these newer therapies may be uh, uh, eventually a little bit easier for pediatric MS uh, patients and their families and hopefully also the safety and monitoring of these therapies will be an international effort. Uh, you know, Fingolimid is oral uh, which has a lot of appeal for pediatric patients and adults uh, but oral doesn't mean safer uh, and uh, similarly some of the other emerging therapies are extraordinarily powerful and potentially even more beneficial than therapies that we have now uh, but with that comes the price of potentially uh, greater uh, suppression of the normal immune responses. Uh, and in a population of patients such as children who experience multiple new infections, which is a normal part of childhood, um, this may be an issue. So uh, all of us who care for children with MS feel that we should collaborate uh, to have an international perspective on how to care uh, for pediatric MS patients. And last question, um, can you tell us a bit about the work that the IPMSFG is doing? Right, so the timing of that is perfect because the International Pediatric MS Study Group, or IPMSSG, was founded a number of years ago initially to discuss care and research in pediatric MS 
and has now expanded the care component to also include an international perspective on clinical trials for children. Um, we have a meeting coming up in a few months where we'll be speaking with the regulatory authorities uh, in order to really understand what they expect from pediatric trials and how we can best help families decide about whether their children should be offered these new therapies and in what way. Uh, in addition, even outside of trials, it's clear that we can better care for pediatric MS patients if all of the countries caring for children learn from each other, share protocols, share dosing ideas, uh, and monitor the long-term effects of all of these therapies on how children do as they grow up, as they become parents themselves, uh, um, and as they go through a long uh, course uh, with their disease.